Hi everybody! Hello, Noga! Hi, Gil. How are you doing? But really, how are you doing? I'm a little bit sick. A little bit sick, okay. I'm sorry for being weak. Okay. <laughs> we want to review Season 8, mm -hmm. Episode 3, talking about Game of Thrones. Yes. That's the right. Battle of Winterfell. The song of ice and fire that we were all anticipating for eight seasons. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? So the Night King is evil. He's just evil. And uh, he almost won, but then he lost. Prophecies, maybe some complexities. Why, why he wanted to, to do what he wanted to do. None of that. He's just an evil dude. Yeah. He made the, the prime mistake that evil dudes do. They wait too long before they win. They buy their time and then Arya... That's it. Right. If he was just like, wait a little bit less. If he hadn't like stared Bran in the eye for like 20 seconds, then the whole world would have uh, been destroyed, I guess. Right. Damn. Yeah. I mean, it, it was kind of strange the way he reached out slowly, you know, <laughs> to his weapon. I mean, in the past also we've seen that slowly. he walked very slowly, those long, very smug. you know, the very smug, those long gazes. But uh, yeah, I mean, we've seen him, you know, take out his weapon very slowly in the past, but he was aiming, he was looking. Bran was sitting just, you know, in front of him. <laughs> in a wheelchair. In a wheelchair. <laughs> There's nothing to aim for, just take it out, you know. But no, he had to wait. So this is what Oof. happens, like you said. Oof. Wow, thank God, the world is saved, the world is saved. So I can't help but, but compare it now to the other whatever, timeless, incredible franchise that is now reaching its peak at the same time. You have Game of Thrones, you have Marvel Avengers, both reaching the height of the popularity or the storytelling, whatever, at the same time. I have to admit, I was always a little bit, uh, a little bit condescending about whatever, Avengers and Marvel. I watched it, I liked it, but I was like, come on, this is not serious. So I watched Endgame, I'm gonna post reviews with Theo on our podcast, check out our podcast, uh, the link is below. I cried three times during Avengers Endgame. That was so emotionally satisfying. Here, not so much. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Yeah, I, I agree, it was an anti-climax. It was uh, definitely not what we had hoped for. Jora, only Jora died like a meaningful death. That was actually sad. Yeah, I, I, I mean, was sad. yeah. Also, Theon died a meaningful death. And it was mm. also sad in a way. Yeah, I was happy for him. You're a good man. And this is from the guy who knows everything. Yeah. Yeah, he got his final approval of belonging, right? He told him you needed to come home. And uh, he told him he was good while he was you know, all the while suspecting that he was actually evil. Yeah, but I don't think he's good. He's just, uh, he yeah. did the right thing. I mean, why maybe. are we going back to the good, ba good, evil dichotomies, you know? You're good, they're, they're bad. I mean, the whole <laughs> thing about Game of Thrones was uh, the complexity of characters. And now it's just being divided like that in a way that is just, you know, yeah, superficial in a way. Okay, so but first of all, well, first of all, uh, we, are, uh, we already said the first of all, so third or fourth of all. Mm -hmm. So... The magic is now, the magic part of the story is over. So boom, call it confirmed on Game of Thrones being a political story, a historical political story. Now we have three episodes about political machinations and behind the scenes. So all, there were all kinds of theories about why the Night King wants to do what he wants to do. Why kill everybody? Okay. Maybe there was a new theory that I just heard last week, that the prince that was promised, it was a prince that he was promised. And then whatever the humans uh, didn't... Uh... You okay? I'm okay. <laughs> they didn't hold up their end of the bargain, so now he comes to take the prince that was promised. Maybe that's John, maybe that's John's son, I don't know. Maybe they want to restore balance in the world. Maybe they saw their ending and they're looking forward to their ending. But no. And of all the ways that he could have died, it's, the, it's Arya that jumped out of nowhere, did her knifey thing, right? The knife that appeared in the first act with uh, Bran in episode three of season one, right? Right. 
And then again, da, 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 that's the knife that stabbed uh, the Night King in the third episode now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was uh, uncalled for in a way. I mean, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't see it coming because it was not something likely <laughs> to happen. Okay, so we didn't see it coming, but to our def in our defense, the Night King didn't see it coming either. Right. And if he didn't see it coming, then who are we, you know? To... <laughs> He's been alive for thousands of years. He didn't see it coming. Yeah. Did Bran see it coming? I think he did, because he was with the ravens, you know? He was up in the air. He must have seen Arya approaching them. And uh, when he s signaled Theon that it was time, I guess in a way he knew that uh, Theon had to clear the way for Arya to come in and... Right. Just like, just stall the Night King just for 20 seconds more. Just like... Right, exactly. And he knew the Night King would walk so slowly? I tweeted that it was boring, but it wasn't, it wasn't actually boring. It was very intense, right? The battle was very, very intense. <laughs> A little bit too intense, like we had to stop for like uh, two minutes. Yeah, watching Midway. a battle for an hour, I mean, it's, a, it's a bit too much, you know. We're in the Middle East, for God's sake. <laughs> we need a bit of escapism. Just right. Also, it's the middle of the night, we have to say. We watch it it's here, it's the middle, in the middle yeah. of the night. Right, so we had to stop, take a breather a little bit, and then go back. So it was war, war, war. And also, when the... When the slow-mo thing started and the music, the volume uh, was uh, going up, we were saying, okay, Deus Ex Machina is coming. Boom, Ninja Aria. With the way she jumped in season six. Crouching tiger, dancing dragon, whatever. <laughs> Hidden Aria. So what was the whole thing about? What was uh, what were the what workers uh, about? I don't know, and it's kind of disappointing also because we want to know a little bit about them before the prequel. Like we want to be interested in them. If they're just evil, why should we watch a whole show about just like an evil group? Forming the formation of an evil group. The formation of an evil group when you, we already know that group's destiny, right? We know how it's going to end for them. So I, I just didn't get what they were doing. Okay, okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the good things in the episode. So the cinematography, of course, beyond reproach, see all the flames uh, with the uh, Dothraki going over, seeing the zombies, the dead, as this wave, endless wave of the coming and coming and never stopping. And you were talking a little bit, right, about that this uh, good and evil part. This is so they represent, right, the schizoid paranoid position. You wanna? I, I want to talk about uh, the 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 battle in the sense of like the song of ice and fire. Right, but I ask you a question. And this is my show. Okay. At the end, it was more about politics than about fantasy. Right. But the dragon fighting was incredible. Yeah. We thought that uh, Drogon was going to die, and actually we got, we were like, no, he's going to die. We, we got, uh, yeah, we got into that. And I also like the fact that we didn't quite figure out what was going on and who survived and who didn't. Because uh, in a way it could be considered to be a fault in the script. But, wow. I, but I think it very much captures the experience of war and battle in the sense that uh, you, you don't know who survived, that you just, you know, you saw images, you don't really get everything that's going on at that moment. You're just reacting and you see all kinds of blurs and at one point something is clear, at the other point something is blurred again. Not that I've been in battle, <laughs> but it, it, it was as if I, I, I had. So uh, uh, we're gonna post a video breaking down the battle scene uh, compared to other battle scenes in the show and other battle scenes on screen with uh, Asi, he, he's uh, an expert in uh, filmography and art. Uh, so you were saying, you were telling me that it felt a bit like junk food. Yeah. Explain. Uh, I agree that it wasn't boring, but I it felt- no, it, it wasn't boring. It was uh, we were really into it, uh, but 
in a way, afterwards, it felt a bit like, ugh, you know? Like it didn't feel very nourishing. Satisfying, nourishing, yeah. yeah. And now everything is very plain, it's very to the point. You know, you have the, the grease, the salt. Uh, <laughs> right. He's, uh, the evil guy is very evil. The good guys just want to stay alive. Mm-hmm. The bad guys are just like looking around for you everywhere. They want to kill you. So if you compare it, uh, okay, we're going to elaborate about that in, the, in a different video, but if we compare it to other battle scenes uh, in the show, you had complexities because it, when it was two armies of uh, humans fighting. Mm-hmm. Who am I for? Should this one win? Is this going to win? Here is like, if they win, then there's nothing. Mm-hmm. But the director, I think he made the most out of the simplistic uh, story that we were kind of afraid for Arya's life. Yeah. We were afraid for Daenerys' life when she fell. Mm-hmm. We were afraid for Drogon's life. We weren't afraid for Jon's life. Ah, okay, so, so another thing that we want to talk about. All the men are going to battle except a few uh, women, Brienne and, uh, and Arya and Lady Mormont. Yeah, that was sad. That was sad. And he just like spanked her, boom. But then he, she was very lucky, we were all very lucky, that uh, he again was stalling and that he was holding her so near to his eye. If he would have just like uh, did this, then uh, the giant would have just wrecked havoc over there. But all the women... <coughs> all the women are weak. And Not staying. all the women are weak. Most Brienne, of the women are Arianne. weak. Yeah. And they are in the crypts. Protecting the children. <laughs> Protecting them themselves. Okay, so let's talk a little bit, a little bit about that. We, we touched on that in other videos, but the men, the men are out fighting, putting their bodies on the line, and the women, the women are waiting. Those are the social roles mm-hmm. when it comes to war. Defend yourself and your social gender role, please. First of all, they were defending the children. The children but... could have just stayed there. But also we can see that when women in the show, when they, when they begin training and they want to be warriors, then they can and they're very good at it. So there's also like the social construction uh, of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like uh, in the Israeli army, of course. Uh, I mean, women in the Israeli army are like superb commando. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> No, but we have women in the military in combat positions. We've had that for a long time. We have women pilots, whatever. And they can always choose, though. They have more choice in that. You're right about that. Like men, they don't have a choice. If they have a certain profile, then they go into the combat units. Women can choose if they want to or not. If you want to be a man and uh, and hide out in the crypts, you have to be really, really short or you you don't have balls. Mm -hmm. All the other men are outside fighting. Actually... When I was uh, watching the episode, I was like, I would rather be up and just do something. Okay, this was another thing about the episode. There was a total lack of agency throughout the episode. Mm-hmm. The, the, the ones who were controlling and moving the plot were the, the nothing, the big nothing, death, darkness that is coming that you can't understand and you can't rationalize and you don't know what they want and what they're doing, what their plan is. We were like, like the characters, just like, what, 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 where, where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? What is it, this ping? It's your phone? Perhaps it is my phone. So unprofessional. Uncool. So that was a little bit also, I thought, interesting that we feel like the characters. But also, also it kind of uh, wears you out, wears out like your, your attention spans. Like, why isn't anybody doing something active, proactive, that is changing uh, and affecting the plot? They were always reacting, 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 reacting. Okay, so this is it for this review. Again, we're going to post this week Q&A podcast, new podcast, Ancient Greece in Movies with Dr. Ruth Hervos, evolutionary biologist and humongous history buff. We're going to talk about Troy 300 Alexander. And through that, we're going to talk about ancient Greece, about the time when those movies were made, that's during the Iraq War. And also, we're going to look at from our time how we see now the time uh, where the movies were, were made. 
We're also gonna post a reaction video to the inside the episode by Dan and Dave. We've watched only just a little bit. Wanna react to it and see what they were doing, what they say about what they were doing. So if you haven't uh, followed our podcast, you can check it out below the links. You can follow us on iTunes, Stitcher, or Spotify. So thank you everybody for watching. Thank, thank you. you patrons. Thank you patrons. Boom for supporting the channel. You're welcome. <laughs> She's a patron. And uh, you are welcome to come over patreon.com slash got academy. We'll be happy to have you over in our community and we'll see you all next time. Bye everybody. Thank you for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know what I hear most often from new patrons coming into our Patreon page is that they've been enjoying the God Academy videos for a long time and that they're happy that they finally can support the channel. So you too can be happy. Happiness is just around the corner. It's on patreon.com slash God Academy. Bliss. It's just one cup of coffee a month. Come on. I like coffee.